now we know how to draw a network diagram using given activities and their predecessors so now our objective is to find out the total project duration by using this network diagram right so for that we need to know what is the individual activity time so which is given like this so this project duration is nothing but actually the total time required to complete the project so project duration is basically the time required to complete the project it's not the submission of individual activity timings so there is a difference between these two see since the you can see in this network there are lot of parallel activities that are happening and there are series activities as well so the the project duration will be the minimum time that we need to complete all these activities so if you see the duration of a is represented under the arrow like this as as per the given data activity it takes a duration of 5 can be 5 days assume that 5 days b takes 4 days c takes 5 days and d activity d takes 6 days e takes 3 days and f takes 4 days so activity a takes 5 days and activity b takes 4 days c takes 5 days b and c are parallel activities which can be run simultaneously which can be done simultaneously so it it won't be to to uh, the total time required for these two activities is not 4 plus 5 it's actually 5 that's a maximum of these two so we can start at the same time point and which one takes the maximum it takes 4 days and this takes 5 days so when we are processing them parallelly so the time taken to complete this both the activities is 5 days so similarly we need to calculate the minimum time required to complete all the activities which is nothing but completing the total project so in this case so there are you can see two paths one is this one and another is this one so this path contains activity a say this is say path one and path two okay so path one has activity a b d and f and path two has a c e and f so out of this a is a common activity so it will take five days whether it is in this direct this path or this path it will take five days and b d are parallel activities to c and d so these two activities can happen in parallel and 5 is a common activity in both the paths so if we calculate the time required in path 1 so it will be summation of each of these activities timings that is 5 plus 4 plus activity b takes 4 and activity d takes 6 and activity so this is a dummy activity which, which takes zero time as we discussed in our earlier lectures it's a dummy activity that is zero and it takes f takes four so it is 19 so whereas path two this takes activity a plus c five days activity e takes three days and activity f takes four days so this is 17 days okay so i'll write it more clearly so the path 2 is a c e and f so these are parallel activities so path 1 consisting of activity a b and d and f takes 19 days 
so actually it's 9650 yeah 19 days and then part 2 of consisting activities a c e and f it takes 17 days so out of these two 19 days in, in, in any in any case this project should have all these activities completed by the end of the project completion date so that means these four activities should get completed which take 19 days in the same case here also these four activities should get completed out of which these two are common and these two are basically the parallel activities to this so you can see that this takes lesser time but this takes 19 days so to complete all the activities of the project it takes 19 days because it these days these activities can also accommodate in parallel to this 19 days so the project duration will be in this case so maximum time that takes is 19 days so to complete all the activities assuming some of these activities are parallel so it takes 19 days to complete all the activities so this is called the project duration of this set of activities right now in order to complete this project in 19 days so which activities we need to monitor closely so that delay in such of such activities might delay in the project duration of 19 days so we should make sure that this project duration of 19 days should not over spill so it should not go to 20 days or 21 days right so that means all the activities that are there in this path that is a b d and f should get completed within the duration that is given so whereas activities in this case say whereas c and e because a and f are common these anyway will take a and f will take 9 days so within 9 days this is 5 plus 4 it will take 9 days to to do this two activities and b and bd and c are parallel right so you can see there is a two two days extra time that we are gaining in this case that is 19 is a broad duration but seven, this this activities gets completed in 17 days only so that means these two activities has extra two days as a slack so, say c and e takes 5 plus 3 8 8 days whereas b and d takes 6 plus 4 10 days so, and these are parallel so b and d takes 10 days whereas c and e takes 8 days okay and remember that f starts only when these both all these four activities are completed at this point of time so these activities c and d has a buffer time of two days whereas activity b d doesn't have a buffer it should be get completed within the time given so the path in which the timings are very critical in order to reach our product dead, uh, project deadline of 19 days so that path is called a critical path because all these activities on this path are critical in nature in the sense if we delay or because of any reason if one of these activities got delete, delayed then the project will not be on time so if the project entire project will get delayed in this case there are only four activities but in a complex project we say if it takes a six months delaying one activity might affect all other downstream activities which might delay the entire project so in that case we need to focus on only the critical activities which are basically affecting the entire project time so those activities are called critical activities so in this case activity a b and d and f which are determining the project duration 
are the critical activities and the path which is which is which consists of all the critical activities is called critical path so these are very important terms critical activities and critical path so which is the main objective of doing this all this network analysis to arrive at the critical path to find out the critical path so that the project managers can focus on the, all the activities that are part of critical path in order to avoid or delay the in order to avoid the reasons for delay in the project so we'll see what all are required to find out the critical activities and what what is the flexibility or what analysis we can do by using this critical activities or critical path in our next lecture for engineering services general studies video lectures visit www.iesgeneralstudies.com for mechanical engineering video lectures and question and answer discussion visit www.getnet.com